Good morning in his presence, church. How are we feeling today? I said, how are we feeling today? Yeah. Well, despite how you're feeling, God is still almighty. Amen. 
let's just stand up and let's just give him glory and honor and, and, and a sacrifice of praise this morning. Hey, hands together like this. Can you do this with me? That's it. Let's give the almighty God all of our praise this morning. So high above this grace and strength in every touch He put my heart in place He took the hurt and hate My sins are gone without a trace His name just makes the devil say Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, Our God's almighty God He's so victorious Oh, oh, oh yeah You're everything and more Shower bell, my flying shout Holy, holy is the Lord Humbly we bow our knee to you who sent The captive free with power and authority Forever and eternally Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our God's almighty God He's so victorious Oh Never knew a love like this Wasn't told life in Christ can be so good Sovereign and powerful Gentle, still tender with soul, so good Tasted and seen, none sweeter Almighty King, you can't be beaten Undefeated, he's the reason why I'm singing Won't you lift your hands up? And while you at it, gonna stand up For the word, it's living, revealing, healing, killing cancer Miracle work is Savior, watch me praise him with a dance Cause every time I call, he always answers If love come against me, spirit lifting up a standard Jehovah Almighty, Lord of hosts, my only hope Hosanna, hey, hey, hey. seconds of great praise right now. Come on. He's worthy of it. Fail. Come on. No. Come on. He's worthy. Let's just make this service go right today. Three. Come on. Two. Come on. One more second. Come on. One. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Come on. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. We came here to honor him and bless him. And also to ask him, how many have questions? You need something in your life today. And you came because he said, we're two or more gathered in my name. There I'll be in the midst of him. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord today. Let's open up so that God can move in our life, meet all of our needs. That's his will. He loves his children. He knows exactly where you are. Falling on you, falling on you, I'm wanting you to know I live to worship you and always give you 
praise It's hard to say what I mean But I need you Feet of bronze and eyes of fire My lips can't interpret my heart's desire And my passion that burns Just like a fire inside Won't you listen to my cry As I say oh
the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the glory of your goodness, the glory of your goodness, Jesus. You never fail me, you never fail me, no matter what it looks like, oh, you've never failed. Fail me. You are faithful, God. You are faithful, God. Holy Spirit, your welcome here. Come flood this place. Fill the atmosphere. Cause it's your glory, God. Our hearts and all. To be overcome by your presence, oh. Come on, give him a pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your manifest presence. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. Yours is the glory, yours is the glory. 
Jesus has a powerful name above every name in heaven and earth and under the earth. In the name of Jesus. I, I believe, I b believe his name is more powerful than depression, discouragement, apathy. Someone has had their dreams stuffed. I believe his name's more powerful than that. I believe if we call on the name of Jesus that things come alive. Come on, there's life in him. There's life in the Lord. In him is light. And light will come alive. I believe his name's more powerful than failure. Name above all names. Over and over again. Failure over and over again just means that you keep trying. That can't keep you down. You know, it's hard to beat somebody if they just keep getting up off the floor trying again. It's hard to beat somebody like that. I believe Jesus' name is powerful. Anybody? I believe his, his name is more powerful than lack. A bad economy. More month than money. I believe it's more powerful than cancer. Sickness and disease, multiple sclerosis, sickle cell anemia. Divorce, devastating pain, crushed in life, setbacks. I believe the name of Jesus is more powerful than that. Anybody believe that? Jeremiah was in the prison and God said, just call to me. Call to me and I'll answer you. If you call to me, I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't even know yet. I'll open your eyes and show you your tomorrows. Because see, you're crying about your yesterdays, but I got tomorrow just waiting right up ahead for you. You don't even know what I got for you tomorrow. Anybody going to praise the name of Jesus this morning? Anybody got to shout? Anybody got to shout a praise for the name of Jesus this morning? Anybody, anybody, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We just go call to him. Just get our faith up today. I've been hurt too many times. I've been crushed too many times. Devastated too many times. At a loss too many times. Lost loved ones too many times. And seeing God come through every single time. Seeing God come through every single time. When I didn't think it was possible anymore, he came through. Come on, there's light and life in the name of Jesus Christ. So you get your faith up today and know that we're two or more gathered in his name. He's right there in the midst of them. And he inhabits the praises of his people. Can we give him one more praise in his house? Come on, you ought to. Come on. I want you just to grab a hold. Well, don't grab them. 
just hi hug and high five those of you around. Tell them it's good to be in the house of God with you. Love on somebody. Introduce yourself to some people you don't know. Just be bold and just say, my name is. Good morning in his presence, church. How we doing? Yes. Woo! My name's Eric. My name is Prince. How you guys doing this morning? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we just wanted to take this moment right now to welcome everyone for joining us, especially our first time guests. If, woo! Yeah. If this is our first, if this is your first time here, we have something special we want to get in your hands. It's this, uh, show me what it is, bro. This is a beautiful in his presence church mug with a special word from our special pastors here yeah. and uh, also comes with a spoon uh ice cream yogurt i'm a yogurt guy anybody yogurt okay well put whatever you like in here but we want to get this into your hands for free so if you could please just lift your hands up high just one hand if you're a first timer all right -timer. welcome to church they're Praise bringing God. around this brochure that has some information about our church and different ministries inside our church um there's an attachment on the back. Go ahead and fill that out. And at the end of the service, take it over to our lobby, and you'll see our first-time guest table there. And there'll be someone there to exchange the attachment for the gift. Yes. Yeah, and they're just going to love on you and invite you to come back to another service here at IHP. So, church, let's give them one more great big IHP welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Do y'all know Eric and Prince? They're great guys. If you don't know them, get to know them. Amen. 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 Hey, I want you to turn your Bibles to Malachi. Somebody turn to New King James Version, Malachi, on your phone. Tell me when you got it. I'm going to have you read it. So don't, don't tell me you got it unless you're a good reader. Okay. Anybody got that? New King James Version in your Bible, on your phone, whatever. Wow, y'all don't even know where Malachi is. It's Malachi if you're if you're Italian. You might it might it might be uh, confused about that. Only if you're Jewish is it Malachi. You got it? You want to read it? You didn't volunteer? Yeah, you got it. New King James Version. Okay, here. Uh, starting in verse eight and keep going until I tell you to stop. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. So he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be food in my house, that there be provision for people when they're coming in. There be nice seats, there be air, whatever it is, that people before you have made it possible that we can come in and enjoy church and, you know, and go to the bathroom. You know, there's bathrooms and stuff. Amen. Okay, so now I want you to tell us the blessings here. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So number one, he opens up the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing so much you can't even receive it. It will overflow your life. You'll have to start giving it away. You start to become a blessing to other people, right? Okay. Now what's in the next? Okay. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. Says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, the one that comes in and shuts opportunities doors for you, the one that comes in and shuts you down. You got, you know, break something in your house, something that stops you from going forward. It comes in at the wrong time. It seems like somebody took your position. It seems the devourer comes in and starts to devour you. God said he'll rebuke that. So he's going to open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that you can't even receive too much. It's going to overflow your life, and he's going to rebuke the devourer for your sake right okay is there any more come on says the lord of hosts all the nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land says the lord of hosts so other people other nations other people around you though everybody on your blocks will call you blessed because you'll be a delightful land you'll have more than enough to give god will bless you and you'll change it'll transform your life and they'll look at you and go good lord who do you serve right anything else that's it. Okay, how many give me a penny out of a dime for that? 
Anybody give me a penny out of the dime? If I just offered you those blessings right now, would you give me a penny out of a dime for it? How many? Raise your hand if you give it to me. Would you give me a dollar out of $10? Anybody give me a buck for that? Anybody give me 10 out of 100? How about if I offered you that, I said it's going to cost you $10 out of every 100 you make. But yet when you tell people to tithe, they would, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh -uh. No, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because money, money. But if you tell them all those blessings, say all it's going to cost you is a penny out of a dime. Somebody, would, somebody on the street that knows nothing about tithe would say, I'll do it. You're going to rebuke the devourer for my sake? I'll give you a penny out of a dime for the rest of my life. How many would say that? I'll give you a penny out of a dime for the rest of my life. If you'll rebuke the devourer for my sake, I'll give you a penny. Yeah, sure. Come on. Who wouldn't want those blessings? That's what God's offering us. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in everything else. Know this, that he wants to come into your life and he wants to explode into your life. And he said, man, if you'll just believe me and trust me, try me. He said, try me. Just try it. And there's some people here, you still won't try it. You got caught up in some religious thing. Well, you know, it's the law. and the blah, blah. No, tithing is way before the law. Tithe, say tithing is before the law. It's 400 years before the law was ever written. Tithing was a part of God's people. Abraham tithed 400 years before. Now, the Jewish people, they did a lot with it. They made it a part of their Levitical priests. That's how they got paid. They did all kinds of things with it, but it doesn't matter what they did. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. We don't have the Jewish customs now, but tithing wasn't a Jewish custom. It was a part of the heart of Abraham, right? So come on, let's do this. Let's do this thing. Allow God to come in and just bless you. Penny out of a dime, dime out of a dollar, ten out of a hundred, hundred out of a thousand, a thousand out of ten thousand. That's where it gets hard. Why? Because you can almost get a laptop for a thousand dollars. Once it gets up there and you can buy some stuff with that money, it's hard to give it because things will try to get a hold of you. But you must stay faithful to God. You must honor the Lord with your giving. You have to honor the Lord with your giving. You don't honor the spirit of the world with your giving. You don't honor things with your, with your life. No, you honor the Lord with your giving. Amen? Come on, are you ready to give today? Come on, just go ahead and pass out the envelopes, ushers. Go ahead and give that out. I'll stall. You guys are in for a great, great treat today. The, the message is so supernatural. There's no telling what will happen from this point forward. I'm believing people got healed just during the praise and worship. Amen. Amen. How many felt the Spirit of God while we were praising and worshiping God today? Amen. Amen. It's so powerful to come into a Spirit-filled church because the Holy Spirit moves in all that we do. Amen. Amen. The pastor's got a great message. I can't wait. I'm going to pray over your offering. So you can text to tithe. I mean, how many use the kiosk? Anybody? There's a lot of people that use it. I, I never see anybody there, though. That's not a good sign, you know. Listen, if you put your bank card in that kiosk, you get air miles. If you, if you get it back, you get something back right there. See, God blesses right there as you give. It's amazing. You can do, go old school like me, fill out the envelope, put your bank card on there, there, all your stuff on there, or you can uh, go online and do it. I like to do it in the sanctuary. I don't know about you, but I like being a part of the community that gives the tithe on Sunday. I like being in there. What? Oh, all of our online guests. Yes. Make sure that you know that you can uh, just punch that button right there. It'll tell you where to do it, and you can give online. We, we're we praying for all the... Listen, Oh, nation after nation is watching us online. They know that miracles happen in His presence. Church people are believing that God will touch their kids and their life all over the world, and we just thank God for that. Amen. Amen. I love our church. Okay, hold your envelope up when you're ready. Your phone, whatever you have there. Uh, don't hold an em empty envelope up. Don't lie now. You can't fake on God. How many found that out? Okay. All right, we're going to pray. Just hold your, put whatever you got. Father, I just ask you, in the name of Jesus, that you would take this money that was in our hands and now becoming seed to bring a harvest. I'm asking you to bless it like you did the fishes and the loaves. I'm asking you to multiply it, God for your kingdom, for your glory. Let everybody see that you're a great and awesome God. Take this and use it so that all will know that Jesus Christ is alive from the dead. 
We thank you for it. We ask that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You pay every bill that's represented here, every need that's represented here, every bit of debt eradicated that's represented here. God, we thank you because you are a great and awesome God. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen? Come on, somebody. Let's go ahead and give now. Ushers, you may receive. Pastor Desiree, are you ready? Where's your Bible? It's in my heart and in my mouth. I, I can't say anything about that. <laughs> I was trying to find something wrong with that, but I can't find anything. No, that's good. All right. Father God, we love you, Lord. We magnify your name, God. Father God, I pray for each and every person here, each and every person watching online. And Father God, I thank you for the plan and the purpose of God on their lives, Father. And I thank you for favor, 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 favor. I come against every plot and plan of the enemy against your life, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray and declare that anything your hands touch, that there be prosperity and blessings. I pray and declare that anything that can go right in your life, it's going to go right. I pray and declare that every, every assignment that's meant to harm you is being annihilated now in the name of Jesus. You love God. You love him with all your heart or you would not be here today. God says all things work together for good for those that love God. That means even the attacks of the enemy against your life right now, they're going to work together for good, says the Spirit of God. He would say only be strong and of good courage. Do not grow weary while doing good. Father, I pray for the wind of the Holy Spirit to strengthen each and every person. I command every cancer cell to wither up and die right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that this is a healing house with miracles, signs, and wonders taking place. If you need healing in your body, raise your hand right now. Father God, I thank you right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. I thank you for healing. I thank you for healing in their heart, healing in their mind, healing in their body. I command every cell, tissue, and organ of your body to function perfectly in the name of Jesus. All things are possible with God. He says, I wish above all things that you prosper and that you're in good health. Even as your soul prospers, your soul is prospering right now because you are hearing the word of God, because you are sitting in God's house, because you're under the anointing of God and the anointing breaks chains off of your life. It's broken in the name of Jesus. We call addictions broken today. And Father God, I thank you that you're the healer, that you're the fixer, that you're the mender. I thank you that we can look to you, Jesus, and you make everything whole. So Father, I thank you for those broken places right now being put back together. And Father, I thank you for those that have been discouraged I thank you that today is a day of encouragement. I thank you for that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you agree, you can say amen. I want to encourage you today. God loves you so much, and he does have a plan and a purpose for your life. You're not born on accident. You're born with a purpose on purpose. Now, the devil is ruthless. He comes to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. But your God is relentless. And he sent Jesus that you could have life and have it more abundantly. The greater one is in you. The greater one is on your side. The only thing the devil can get you to do is to buy into his lies. Don't buy in it, into it. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall 
make you free. It's going to make you free today. The truth of the word of God is going to be spoken over your life. And I believe the Holy Spirit that's here is just going to illuminate it to whatever your particular situation is. And you're going to have freedom today. You're going to have wisdom. You're going to have joy restored. Any bit of oppression and depression, you have to go. You have to bow. You have to bow to the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for that liberty here. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you agree, say amen. Okay. <laughs> the first PowerPoint I want to make today is you get power when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 verse 5 says, For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. If you were here on time... <laughs> which I didn't see most of you on time, but you would have seen people in our baptism being baptized in water. They got baptized in water. When you're born again, you should be baptized in water. Jesus did. And when he did, the Holy Spirit came upon him. So the baptism in water simply represents your old life is being dunked and under the water and you're coming up new because when you're born again, you're a new creation in Christ. That means the things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. That means your flesh is a dead man and you're alive in Christ. There is a whole new beginning. There is a brand new world of joy and peace and miracles that you're going to be walking into. So it goes on to say in verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, to Woodland Hills, to San Fernando Valley, to Santa Clarita, to Thousand Oaks, to all of Los Angeles, United States, anywhere in the world you go. You'll be a witness because you will get power. And I really believe that there are too many Christians living a defeated life because they're not utilizing everything that God has done for us. Too many times people will blame the devil or blame God for what the devil does. And they'll say, God, how could you let this happen to me? When in reality, it's the devil that did it, and he's given you all authority to overcome the devil. But let's just say, let's just say you're in your house and you got a gun. And let's say a robber comes in and starts stabbing you, but you're holding a gun. But you take the gun, and while he's stabbing you, you just put it on the side, and you get stabbed. That's not very smart, is it? You take the gun, and you shoot him. And I'll just, you know, not to shake you up too much. Let's just use spiritual terms like it's a demon and you're killing the devil. You know, but, but this is the reality. We're, we've been given spiritual warfare as the people just are like, mm, okay. But today I believe my goal is <laughs> that these gifts that God has given you are so stirred up that you don't let that gun or that sword, you know, the Bible calls uh, the Lord calls the Bible the sword of the Spirit. So it, it, it's like a sword. It's like a gun. It's like fire ammunition against the devil that you can either let it sit and not use it or you can pick it up and fight. But there is a gift that is so powerful, you will overcome the enemy every single time if you use it. So it's one thing to be born again. It's another thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, this here is my little weight setup. These are some of my weights. Um, here is a lightweight. But, you know, if you want to get strong in the natural, what do you do? You go to the gym, you get some weights, and you start pumping. And you do it over and over and over again, and you stay consistent. That's what we do in the natural to get strong. 
Well, how much more so in the spirit? The Bible says in Jude 1, 20, to build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you want to get strong in the spirit, you got to pray in tongues. You got to use the gift that God gave you and build up your spirit, man, by praying in the Holy Ghost. So let's just say I want to get strong spiritually. That's about as powerful as me taking this three-pound weight. You know, if I want to get stronger, I got to go to a heavier weight. This eight pounds a little better if I really want to build some muscle here. Well, the longer you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you start coming to intercessory prayer at 8 a.m. here, you come early, you start praying, you get up early, and you pray for 30 minutes. I mean, how many of you guys, if I have any workout guys, you spend an hour in the gym pumping weights? Well, how much more so your spiritual body that you're praying in the Holy Ghost for an hour? You can start with three minutes a day. Then you can work up to five minutes a day. Then you can work up to eight, but you keep getting stronger and stronger as you pray in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are looking at me like a deer in headlights. It's okay because I'm just getting warmed up and you're going to get this. I got plenty of visuals up here until you get it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We're a spirit soul and body you got to take care of all three you got to build up your spirit man <sighs> the holy spirit empowers you to crush those things that have been pushing you around anybody been discouraged lately pray in the holy ghost anybody been fearful pray in the holy ghost anybody been anxious Pray in the Holy Ghost. When things go wrong, pray in the Spirit. When you need to be strong, pray in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but when I got up this morning and I looked in the mirror, I went, oof. I need some help. What does edify mean? One of the definitions is improve. Well, if I put on some makeup, you know, I can improve the way I look. I can get some stuff and hide those little sunspots. <laughs> Another thing it means to edify when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, you're edifying yourself, is to educate yourself. How many of us have books in the natural that we read? We want to get better. Here's a good one, God Hunger by Desiree Ayers. Here's another good one. If you haven't read this, Beyond the Flame by Desiree Ayers. But, but you educate yourself. We'll do things in the natural, yet we forget. Everything happens in the spirit realm before it happens in the natural. You got to get the victory first in the spirit realm. But yet we'll do all these things physically to take care of ourselves, yet neglect to take care of ourselves spiritually. The Holy Spirit is not superficial. It is supernatural. A Holy Spirit encounter will change your life forever. The Apostle Paul became a mentor instead of a tormentor. Pastor Mel became a pastor, psalmist, apostolic minister instead of an actor, waiter, whatever. I became a preacher, pastor, healing evangelist instead of a stunt woman, actress, party girl. What about you? What about you today? Let me talk to you about you. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're going to become a superhero with supernatural powers. you got to be kidding. Okay, where, where, where are we? Star Wars? Are we in Super? Well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about you're going to be a superhero with supernatural powers when you pray in the Holy Ghost. 
It gives you power to be a witness. What are you going to be doing? You're going to be snatching people that are destined towards hell, and you're going to be taking them with you into God's glory and to heaven. That's supernatural. There is no greater superhero than you right now praying in the Holy Ghost. You're it. We don't change the message. The message changes us from being that person in the bar getting drunk to now having a new drunk experience in the Holy Ghost that brings joy and peace with no hangover. God's kingdom is not 10 times better. It's not 100 times better. It's a zillion, billion, quadrillion, even more than that better. But you got to enter in. How do you enter in? You pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray until you feel his presence. You pray until you get the breakthrough. You pray until you get the victory. Okay, Acts 1 verse 8 says, But, but you shall receive power when the... Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. I already read that, right? But I want to come back to it again. Why? I don't want to let go of this witnessing part. You shall be a witness. You shall be a witness. You shall be a witness. Five to seven percent of Christians are being a witness. That's it. Five to seven percent. That means when it's all said and done, and believe me, earth is short... It goes fast. Time here goes very fast. And it's going to be over. And we're all going to at one point be standing before Jesus to give an account for our lives. And you don't want to be sidelined clapping for me and Hannah and Christine because we're out there on the front lines winning people to Christ and getting them saved. No, you got to get in the game. You got to get involved. I want to cheer for you. I want to, Jesus, I want to hear Jesus say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Not what in the world did you do with your life? You see, we come to church to be filled up, to be encouraged, to be supercharged, but then we're filled up to go out there and make a difference. To give life away to others, to bring others into the house of God so they can experience the supernatural presence and power of God so that they won't end up in hell but end up in heaven. There's an end game in mind that we can never forget. And, and sometimes I think we just get too casual. You know, it feels, it feels like we're going to live forever because our spirit man is going to live forever, but this flesh is not. Quiet in this Holy Ghost place. The greatest evangelist of our day, Reinhard Bunke, prays in other tongues. The largest church in the world with Dr. Cho prays in other tongues, teach other people to pray in other tongues. Well, if that's the case, where these churches are having the most impact to change a nation, to win a million people at a time to Christ, why is there so much controversy in the church over praying in tongues? There's churches in Los Angeles, they'll do a whole sermon just like I'm doing it on praying in tongues, not to pray in tongues. That gifts aren't for today. That healings aren't for today. You know, want to know what Jesus called them? Pharisees. Religious spirit, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. People, we have to look at what the word says. The word says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word says, Paul says, I thank God I pray in tongues more than you all. And he says, I wish you all pray in tongues. He wrote two-thirds of the Bible. It has not passed away. Miracles are happening today. How many of you, you've had a miracle in your life? Just raise your hand. Look around, people. 
hasn't passed away, not here at In His Presence Church. We believe that God's a good God, that He loves us, that He's a healing God, and that He does miracles. So don't buy into that. You know, it reminds me of the story of you had these two uh, frogs, and they're hopping along, and there's a pit, and they both fall into it. Now all the other frogs come along, and they're looking into the pit, and they're they're saying, give up, you're going to die, you're going to die, stop trying, they're hopping, they're hopping, they're hopping, trying to get up, just give up and die, you're not going to make it. Well, the one frog finally stopped, and he just died. Well, the other one kept hopping and hopping, and they're like, stop, stop, you know, all the way to right before sunset, and he finally makes it out, and they're like, why did you keep trying when we're telling you to stop he said oh you were telling me to stop i'm death i didn't know i thought you were encouraging me to jump 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 well your father in heaven all the angels the holy spirit jesus is saying go for it go for it there he's telling you all the time you're the head and not the tail you're above and not beneath you're a champion that's the voice you have to listen to. You have to become death to the devil's voice. Who's saying you're not going to make it. You're going to die. You're going to shrivel up. You know, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Be death to the voice of the devil because he's a liar, liar. Pants on fire. And he's swinging from some telephone wire. Romans 8, 11 says, but if the spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Do you need healing? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. PowerPoint number two. You win battles when you pray in the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 16. <laughs> and I think, anybody ever had a challenge with the flesh? Okay, for the 10 of you, um, this is for you, this scripture. The rest of you, just remember this is for the, the other 10, okay. Galatians 5, 16 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I like that better than don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't, 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 don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. It gives you something better to do. Walk in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost, and you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Now, I don't think there's anyone in here that can't relate to this. <clears throat> Just so you know what this is, this is a real chocolate cake. Somebody thought it's a hat. No, it's not a hat. It's a fudge chocolate cake. And have you ever been in a situation where you're like, okay, it's Monday, man. This week I am going to eat good. I'm going to go to Whole Foods, all organic. I'm going to get fruits, veggies, lean greens, uh, uh, lean meats, no greens, and no um, no sugar, and no breads, because breads turn into starch, and that's going to make So this is what I'm going to do this week. Okay, you're set. Here we go. Monday comes by. Tuesday night. Oh, my gosh. You're at a birthday party. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You're celebrating the birthday. They cut the cake, and there you are. What is that? Well, your spirit, you know, had all intentions of eating well. You, you, you made a plan, but what? The flesh is weak. What, what is it? It's 50 to 70% of Americans are overweight. Can relate. 50 to 70% of you can re relate to this story. If not all, 100%. We live in America. I mean, you go to the Cheesecake Factory, they don't serve you normal size. It's for five people. It, it, why? It, it's, it's a society that's set up to, to make you.
eating fat, and then there's a billion dollar business to give you some diet pills and some workout program, something else to get your money. So we're getting you on this end. Now we're going to get you on this end. We're going to get all your money from eating all the food. Now we got to give you, you got to spend all this other money to get rid of all this food. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost or you'll get ripped off. Okay, that's one example of the flesh for the ones that couldn't relate to that story. Perhaps you'll relate to this real life story. <laughs> okay, so this past week I go to the bank just checking on refinances or taking out a second at our house, and I'm standing there, I'm waiting for the person. I see somebody walking towards me that I don't like, that really did us wrong. I'm like, ugh on the inside, you know, but he's heading straight towards me. I'm like, oh, I'm standing there, but I'm kind of like staring at him. He's looking at me. All of a sudden he recognizes it's me. He kind of does one of these, you know, you know, and then I'm like, you know, there's a lot going on in my mind. You know, a lot of things I'd like to say, but really what I'd like to do is just go, pow, Pow! Mm, right in the nose! Right in the nose! Then I'd like to do a uh, roundhouse! Knock the head off! Then I'd like to come in with an uppercut! And then just kind of like stomp on them. I mean, I know you're much more spiritual than that, but praise God I was praying in the Holy Ghost and I didn't do that. Because I didn't knock him out. Uh, but, you know, all of a sudden he's heading towards me. I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, oh, Lord, help me. I just kind of did one of these. <laughs> and then he did one of these back. And then I kind of turned my back and I walked out. And I'm like, Lord, you know, and you kind of you, you deal with emotions sometimes when you see people that you're not particularly fond of. And then I had to just get before the Lord and go, Lord. My heart is all about the heart. And I'm having kind of some yicky feeling, so I need to pray for this person. So I just started praying and interceding. And I mean really praying. I mean praying that the blessings of God would overtake his life. And, and, and just doing what I knew what was right. Now let me tell you what happens when you do that. Because that's the spirit, not the flesh. But we want our spirit, our spirit man wants to love people, wants to forgive people no matter what they did. Well, when you do that, because this person was really never, ever my problem. What is a problem? Offense. Offense is in the heart. If it's not him, it'd be somebody else. But the design of the enemy, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spiritual principalities and wickedness in the high places. So the devil wants me to be mad. He wants me to get angry. He wants me to say something hateful because then if he can get bitterness on the inside of me, then he has an open door to make me sick. People, this is serious stuff. So the moment I started praying and interceding, what happened? In the spirit realm, that's where I took the fight. And you want to know what I did? I went, mm, boom, take that devil. And then I gave the devil a roundhouse. And then I gave him an uppercut. And then I smashed him. I knocked him out. I stomped on him. And I got the victory. This is how we really fight people. This is real stuff. Don't. The Bible says when you get into strife, there's confusion in every evil work. So the moment you do it, you repent, you get out of it. We're not perfect people. We're going to make mistakes. But when you do, we have an advocate. We have the blood of Jesus. We have forgiveness. And so I encourage you, be the love vessel. Don't, don't fall into the natural realm. 
Stay in the supernatural. Fight in the spirit. Win your battles there because God has big blessings for you. I'm like, okay, God, this is a test. This is a test. I know you got a big blessing coming. Win, pass the test, win the battle. Just like you need food daily, you need to pray in the spirit daily. A praying person ceases to sin. A sinning person ceases to pray. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 verse 26 says, Likewise the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Praise God for that. It goes on to say, For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When you start praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, as I was praying for this person and just praying blessings and what I could in English, then I went into praying in tongues. When you're praying in the Holy Spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God. Your angels that need to go on assignment somewhere, they're being sent on assignment. Things are happening because we don't always know how to pray. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes it's dark. Sometimes it's hard to hear God, but you got to press through by praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes when my husband, <clears throat> during a service, you know, he'll get up here, come on, everybody, praise God. I want you to praise God. I'm trying to sound like him. I can't do it. But, um, <clears throat> You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I just feel like being quiet. You know, sometimes I just think that. But when I yield myself to the submission of my head and come under authority and start to do that, I start to break through things. Well, what's happening? He, he doesn't need a rah-rah act. He doesn't need you all to do that. Why is he having you do that? The Bible says, pray stills the avenger. He can feel the demonic warfare on you. He can feel the oppression on you. He can feel the depression. So he's trying to get you to shake it off, to praise God. Our, spirit, our, our spiritual weapons are not cardinal. They're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And as you praise God and you take an act of faith and you start doing that, those little demons, imp demons run out of this room. You know, he's like a general in the army. And, you know, he's giving assignments to, <laughs> to everybody. You get spiritual leaders that help you do that. You know, I'm whatever, captain, sergeant, whatever. <laughs> but I'm telling you, pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? I'm trying to get you in shape, not physically, spiritually, so you don't get beat up. So the devil doesn't take your marriage. He doesn't take your kids. He doesn't take your church. Rise up. Only be strong and of good courage. That is the word of the Lord for all of us today. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't settle. Go for it. <laughs> okay, number three here. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. I love this. This is John 16, verse 13. It says, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. I love that. He's going to tell us things to, go, to come. He's going to lead us into truth. The Bible says you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, obviously, if we have... Um, we're eating food, and we let it sit there. It'll decay our teeth. What do we do? We get a toothbrush. I don't want to mess up my lipstick. Otherwise, I do this for you. But 
And I doubt you want to see that. So praise the Lord for both of us. But if you're having truth decay, brush up on your Bible. You know, I'm just saying, there is an employer who had an employee. And he asked the employee, do you believe in life after death? The employee looked at him and said, well, yeah, yeah, I do. And the boss said, oh, well, that's good because yesterday when you went home early because you had to go to your grandmother's funeral, well, she stopped in later to see you. <laughs> you know, sometimes people's lies are obvious. Other times they're not. But when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you get very discerning to what's truth and what's not. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Number four, when you pray in tongues, you speak directly to God. How many Catholics or people that grew up Catholic, guess what? You don't have to go to the priest. You get to go directly to God. And this is what the Bible says in John 14, verse, or 1 Corinthians 14, 2. It says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Isn't that awesome? You don't have to... Go to the pastor to find out direction. You can go directly to God. I know when we first started the church, there was only like 12 people. So if anybody needed counsel, I was happy to give it. But as soon as we hit 100, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to eat up my life. God, you got to help me. So I just listened to what Dr. Cho does. He has people fast and pray for three days. If they don't hear anything, then he meets with them. Once I started that, I never had another counseling appointment. What an idea that you go and hear from yourself. What if I gave you some bad counsel? What if I, what if I had um, some bad guacamole and chips and I wasn't feeling that good and I just said whatever off the top of my head? You can't rely on that. You got to know what the Bible says. You got to know what the Holy Spirit is telling you. If you come to me or anybody else, you're going to second best. God's best is that direct hotline to him. You have him 24-7. The Holy Spirit is the best counselor, and he'll lead you. I mean, that grieving, I know you've all had it at times. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. But then you do it anyway. You went, yeah, that was God. I shouldn't have done that. And other times you just know, oh, okay, this is right. I got such a supernatural peace. God's speaking to me. I know this is the Lord. Okay, last point. I'm going to close with this. Number five, he is with you forever revealing things to you. These are benefits of praying in the Holy Spirit. Is the fact that he will reveal things to you. Uh, first off, though, in John 14, verse 16 and 17, it says, this is Jesus says to his disciples, I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. Isn't that awesome? The Holy Spirit, it's never going to leave you. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, my last scripture for the day. Focus, people, focus, hear the word. It's health, it's healing, it's freedom, it's wisdom, it's guidance. The word is a light to your path. You want to hear the word. This is the last one. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10 says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Sometimes we just don't know. We don't know what's holding up the blessing. We don't know necessarily what the challenge is. But you just got to pray in the Holy Ghost. 
I, I, I could sit here for the next hour, I won't, but I could tell you supernatural experience after supernatural experience because of praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, I am going to close with one story that I felt like the Spirit of God wanted to minister to you. And this particular supernatural experience with the Holy Ghost happened in 1985. And after many of you know my story that's in the book, Beyond the Flame, I was a stunt woman, the last stunt I ever did. I was riding in a four by four truck. I was in a fire explosion. I had my face, neck, arms, chest burned in second and third degree burns. My upper lip taken off. When I was in the hospital, they shot me. I was in critical condition and in intensive care fighting for my life as they were shooting me full of morphine. And I was having an allergic reaction to the morphine. And it was a very difficult time. I couldn't even move for the first couple of days. I, I, I couldn't lift my hand to reach for a Bible, let alone open a Bible. And, you know, thank God I had my husband and I had my dad who would come in and they'd open up the word and they'd read to me and they would pray for me. But it was probably about the fourth day. I'm doing better now. I can walk. And um, I don't fully understand why, if you don't have skin, why you would wrap a burn victim in those white gauze things. And I think a part of it has to do with they have to keep the infection out. And the infection kept setting in into my lips. So, you know, it was just a challenge. But when I'd be wrapped in it, then I'd have to pull it off. And with that would come my new skin. So it was just the most... Uh, difficult, painful experience. And one time I thought, you know what, I'm going to walk to where the showers are. I'm going to try to get some water in my face and maybe that'll help. And I did that and it didn't help. And I can remember just getting on my knees. You know, I'm in this section, not near the water. I'm just on my knees. And I went into pity party. And I just started crying, just saying, God, this is just too much. And then what do you do when you're in a pity party? What do you do when you're discouraged? What do you do when you don't know what to do? You pray in the Holy Ghost. So I just started praying in the Holy Ghost. And I started singing in the Spirit. And then I started worshiping God. And I'm just on my knees. And I'm just having this experience with God. And I can feel his presence. Well, after, I don't know, could it be five, ten minutes? Not really sure of time. You know, when you're in the Spirit, it's tough to tell. But I looked down. And all the bandages that were stuck to my face were in a pile, very neatly laid. That was a supernatural experience because of praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, did Jesus do it? Did an angel do it? I don't know who did it. I know it was supernatural, and I know that they didn't fall off. They were stuck. But here they are in a pile. But people, this is what we have to do. When you don't know what to do, pray in the Holy Ghost. God doesn't want you hurting. He doesn't want you in pain. He wants to help you. And it's grievous to me to see Christians blaming God and God, why didn't you come through? No, no, he's saying here, I've given you the Bible. Read it. Renew your mind so you're not thinking that junky thought. I don't want you thinking what the devil's thinking. To renew your mind, you're going to have to read your word. You're going to have to speak it. You're going to have to think on the things that are true and just and lovely and go report. This is what I've told you to do. I can't make you. God says I've done everything for you when I sent my son and He said we sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is God. And I'm here. But he gave you a free will. He can't make you choose what's right. He can't make you pray in the Holy Ghost. But yet he tells us to do these things. He tells us to do them. Well, you decide how strong you want to be. You decide how big you want your muscles. You decide how big you want to be in the spirit. You decide. I say, go for it. I say, pray in the Holy Ghost all day long if you can. When you're driving to work, pray in the Holy Ghost while you're listening to a faith CD. I say, wake up in the morning praying in the Holy Ghost. Take time every day to build yourself up. We're in a war. The planet Earth is crazy. I mean, there's some nutcases out there. 
You could be sitting next to one. I don't know. But, you know, there's just crazy people everywhere. And you're like thinking, oh, my gosh, I thought they were normal. Well, I just know I've had times when I, in the flesh with my husband, where I've gotten in a fight where I'm sure he's thought I was a crazy woman. Because everybody's flesh is crazy. This is what we want to walk in the spirit, and we want to encourage others to pray in the spirit. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, I, I just pray over this word that you've given me for your people. And Father, I, my prayer, my goal in my prayer today was for those that didn't have the Holy Spirit, that you'd get it today. And for those that have it, that it'd be stirred up, that you'd use it more. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for speaking to every heart. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the comforter. And I pray for that comfort on every person here in this room right now. While eyes are closed and heads are bowed, the most important question I'm gonna ask you right now is when you take your last breath, do you know where you'll be? Your body's either gonna be whatever you decide, cremated, buried in the ground, whatever you choose, or whatever your living relatives choose. But your spirit man's gonna go somewhere. And again, God can't make you choose him. But he tells you what to choose. He says, choose Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody goes to the Father but through me. He's given you a choice. And sometimes I'll talk to people and I'll say, I'll be talking about heaven and I'll say, you know, are you going to go there? And they'll say, I hope so. And I'll say, well, what makes you think that you will? And they'll say, because I'm a good person. Well, being a good person doesn't get you into heaven. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. It's being forgiven. It's having him as Lord of your heart. So it's not knowing about him. A lot of people know about him. Yeah, he came to earth. He died 2,000 years ago. He raised from the dead. That, that's all good information, but even the demons believe that. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship? Have you said, Jesus, come into my heart? Be my Lord. If you've never done that, I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. I want to pray with you and for you. And the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. By raising your hand, you're saying, yes, Pastor, pray for me. I want to know Jesus. I want him to be Lord of my heart. I want to spend eternity in heaven. At the count of three, one, two, three, just raise your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Anybody else just raise a high. I see that hand. I see that hand. You can put your hands down. We're going to pray in just a moment. I want to ask one other question before I pray. And you've heard me talk quite a bit about the Holy Spirit because we're going to pray. People are going to be born again. But are you filled with the Holy Spirit? with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If you've never spoken in other tongues, you need this gift. So at the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand so you can pray in the Holy Ghost and have this supernatural power gift and get victory in your life. At the count of three, one, two, three, just raise your hand. I see that hand, 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 I see that hand. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do right now is I'm going to ask everybody to stand to their feet. As a church, we've just got a few minutes left. We're doing good. I'm going to get you out on time. And all of you that raised your hand, I want you to make your way and come forward and stand up front here so I can pray with you and for you. If you raise your hand for salvation, being filled with the Holy Spirit, come on up. Or you should have. Just come on up. Thank you, sweetheart. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on up. Be bold. Be brave. Be strong. Be of good courage. Come on up. Thank you, thank you. Can you do me a favor and turn to your neighbor and say, I'll go with you. I saw you raise your hand. 
I was peeking, so, and just bring them on down. I don't want you guys to miss out on this blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on up. Come on up. You don't want to miss out on this. You don't want to miss out on it. We'll wait. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's about five more of you, so I just don't want you to miss out on this blessing. Come on up. Just be bold. I'm not going to embarrass you. We're just all going to pray together. Come on up. We got a free Bible for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. All of you watching online, we're going to invite you to join us in this prayer. But let's all say this together. So everyone that's up here, I'm going to have you say this after me. Say, Father God, I love you. Jesus, I believe that you came to earth, that you died on a cross, and you rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, my Savior my best friend fill me with your Holy Spirit and every gift that you have including speaking in other tongues I declare that the rest of my life is going to be the best of my life I thank you Father that my future is bright the past is over I forgive. I forgive myself. I forgive others. It's a new day. It's a bright day. It's a good day. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Uh, I, I just felt like I was having you make these confessions at the end. Um, God loves you so much. And he just wants to encourage you. He wants to give you hope where there hasn't been hope. He wants to let you know it's going to be okay. Things can not only get better, they're going to get better. But you need a house of God. You need a home church. This is not a one time I came, I said a prayer. No, this is a lifestyle. You need to be around godly, radical people that are so sold out. And, and so I want to encourage you to join us Wednesday night. Come back Sunday. We have Bible studies every night of the week. If you need to be here every night, be here every week. But at least find one where you can hook in with some people. Behind you, we have leaders. Uh, a special friend assigned to you. Are you two together? No? God has a word for each of you, so I just want to give it to you. The days of sorrow are over. God says, I have so much more for you. And the pain that you're feeling in your heart, you're not going to feel it. It's going to be filled with so much joy. And so, Father, I thank you even right now. I thank you for that joy just filling her. And, and I thank you that oppression is being lifted. Now, stir your heart on yourself. And God says, I don't want you to do that anymore. He says, I want you to let it go because I love you. And he says, you love me. You love God. You wouldn't be here if the Spirit of God didn't draw you today. And he's drawn you because he has so much for you. And, and, and you're in the right place. It's going to get better. Things are going to get better. So God's asking only a couple things. He says, trust me and be strong and of good courage. Two things he's speaking to you today. To trust him and to be strong and of good courage. You're a warrior. You're going to win. Life's not only going to be good, it's going to be great. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. I'm telling every one of you, the best is yet to come. We're in exciting days. They're intense days, but they're exciting days. I want to make sure that you've met at least one person here 
that's going to reach out to you, include you, love on you, invite you to their Bible study. If you can't make theirs, don't worry. We got 50 others. So, but if you just turn around and meet them, they're going to take you into our, our Come on, let's give them a great big hand. Just turn around and meet them right now. Just lead them right on out, Debbie. Church, let's give Pastor Desiree a great big God bless you and thank you today. Awesome. Awesome. So glad I married you. It's just fantastic. I got a question for you, though. I, can we hammer this cake now that you're done with the service? Can we Can we do that thing up right there? Well, I was saving it for Tuesday night, Ariana's birthday party. <laughs> oh, no, that won't make Tuesday night. I'll tell you that right now. It won't last. Come on, guys. Come on. Tell us what's going on. Yeah. That was so good, Pastor. Thank you so much for that. That was so powerful. Oh, this one. I love that jacket, by the way. Oh, you guys are matching. <laughs> you guys are matching. That's great. All right. Well, we have a few announcements. I'll let Israel start this okay, time. Cool. Um, today, we're going to have our partnership class. It's going to be in room seven right over there. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have you guys blessed. May you guys feel at home. And it's going to be at 1 p.m. today. So if you guys signed up for it, we encourage you guys to be there, please. Yeah, if you're a part of School of Leaders, this is going to be combined. So just make sure you show up over there, and I'll come in, and I'll take attendance. Make sure you're there. Cali Girls, this Friday night, you don't want to miss it, okay? Invite be California girls. We have a whole thing planned. You really don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have special guest Mary Hudson here. She's prophetic and powerful, and, and Pastor Desiree is going to be here. It's just going to be, you don't want to miss it. Invite all your women, all their friends, everyone, okay? Amen. And then we have our Mother's Day. This is, it's going to be awesome. Baby dedication and baptisms. It's going to be really special because the moms are going to be baptizing their kids. It's going to be so awesome. And then... Baby dedications are always so cute. Babies are just so lovely. They're, like, amazing. Yeah. So it's going to be so awesome that you guys sign up for it. Bring your kids here. It's going to be an awesome time here at church. Yes. Also, the youth are putting on um, a rose cell. They're, so they're selling roses. However, if you don't want to get your roses on Mother's Day, you could pre-order or you don't want to, like, deal with the hassle of buying them and you want to surprise your mom, you have the opportunity to actually pre-order them. We have a table out there in the lobby. Yeah, and you just go and you pay for them. We have your name down, whatever color you want, and we'll get them here for you. And when your mom gets here on Sunday, just be like, here you go, Mom. And she'll be like, I love you forever. For real. Hey, are the moms baptizing their kids on Sunday? They are. They uh, are. Yeah, I believe Israel spoke about okay. that, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. All right, great, great, great. All right. Do you want to talk about the yeah. internship? Yeah, and then my favorite part is the internship. It's going to be a summer internship that we're having here at In His Presence Church. We spent a lot of time on it. We love it. We think everyone that gets in it is going to have a leadership quality that any ministry they walk into, even in their workplace, they can just be leaders and flourish there and have a great time. I know that's happened to me, a testimony of what I'm doing. I walk into any ministry, and by the grace of God, I know how to just flourish and lead there because of the internship program. And it's just right there, all the info, six weeks. And it was a lot of money before. And this is just a fraction of what it is, and even more than a lot of other internship programs around the country. And it's such a blessing to anyone who gets a part of it. Yeah, Israel and I and many of the interns have honestly grown so much from this program. It's crazy. You deal with everything and anything. But um, sure. the last thing I want to talk about is June 2nd. We are revamping our youth night, and we're doing a youth and young adults. If, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you, you can you. screw for that. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. Yeah. Holy Ghost is going to be involved in this. You honestly, if you're just a young adult and if you're a youth, if you're in high school, this is the place you want to be. It's going to be Friday night. We're going to start Friday night, June 2nd. Put it on your calendar. Invite everyone in your school. School's ending. They're not yeah. going to have anything to do. You can't say I have games, this. No, yeah. it's Friday night. It's summer. Come, okay? It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Also for worship. For worship, with that going on, it's just going to be really big and creative. We need dancers. We need musicians. We need singers. We need actors. I mean, if you do any of these things, God has graced you with these giftings. Bring him glory with them. Amen. Why not? Amen. Why not? Right? Right? And um, that's it for us. That was a lot. That was a lot. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Two more. I'm letting you go. As Penny and Michael come, they're going to tell you about our film festival that we're a part of and going to offer you an opportunity to be a part of it. May 20th, Saturday, 8.30 to 12, we have our CNW Wealth Building uh, Gathering. We're going to teach you how to start your own business and take it to 100 miles an hour 
in just a small amount of time. We're going to tell you how to go to the workplace, the top 1% in your workforce. Even if you just started your job, I'm going to tell you how to rise to the top 1%, get promoted, and get paid for it. It's going to be powerful. So if you're a worker, if you have a job, you want to do better, you want to be able to enter into something you really love, you're just working to pay the bills right now, I want you to come May 20th. It's going to be powerful. i got four special speakers that are going to be there. And uh, we're going to cover every single subject, answer all your questions. So it's May 20th, Saturday morning, 8.30 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon. It's going to be powerful. So I want you to come. Why don't you tell us about the uh, film festival? Hi, church. How are you guys doing? We're excited. we got a lot of things. First of all, did anyone else think the chocolate cake was a hat at first? Anybody? A very delicious okay. hat. Just wasn't, delicious. just wasn't me. We, as a church and the IHP creative team, are entered in the 168 Film Project this year. And for, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the, uh, the biggest international Christian film competition. And... Uh, we have a table set up right outside. We can give you all the information, but we want to get everybody that wants to get involved, involved. We want it to be the church that's doing this, putting this on. So I'll let Penny tell you a little bit more about what we need and what the uh, festival is about. Yeah, the festival is actually a speed competition. Um, and the reason why it's called 168 is because it's 168 hours, which is seven days. And that's actually how long we get to produce, edit, and actually turn in this short film. It's 10 minutes long. Um, so what we need in order to do this, to make a, we're basically building a team. And so part of the team, we need people. Um, we need a DP, which is cinematographer, um, sound mixer, boom operator, colorist, sound editor, basically anybody involved in production. If you have any of those skills, we need your help. Actors, we need actors. Uh, so if you're, you know, have talents and you want to use those for God, please come see us. Um, but mostly, we actually need financing. There's a lot of expenses that are involved in this. So we are asking for people to give donations. Um, you'll be able to make out a check to In His Presence Church, and they'll make sure that we get that. Um, but please, um, you know, donate as generously as you can. Any amount helps. Any amount helps. So please, um, just again, see us out at the table, and we can tell you a little bit more. Thank you. Thanks, so, guys. So your table's right outside, right outside the door. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Lift a hand to heaven. Okay, so we heard the word of the Lord today. It really is an all-in message to begin to be the disciples of Jesus Christ that you were called out of the world and into the kingdom, praying in the Spirit. As you leave today, you'll meet people that don't know him. If today was their last day on earth, they wouldn't be with him. And you're that right there. So, Father, give us boldness and courage every day. Today, tomorrow, the next day. God, don't let us walk past the crowd and say, I should have said something. I wish I would have said something. No, God, use me for your glory. What a privilege it would be to be used in the power of God in the life of someone for all of eternity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling me into this to be a part of what you're doing. And I just thank you, Father, for your faithfulness towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night at 7. Bye-bye.